Morning AP Seminar, Mr. Muller here, and in this video we're going to be typing about, talking about the types of different arguments that you can be assigned. Writing an argumentative essay or a documentary or some sort of persuasive piece isn't necessarily just trying to make the argument. There are lots of different ways to do that, and you have to be the ones to determine what type of argument you need to make for a particular task. So, we're going to be going through each of those arguments today. Hope you're excited. I'm excited. Let's get started. First type of arguments we're going to be talking about are called causal arguments. For some reason when I was writing this, I kept trying to write casual arguments instead of causal arguments, but it is causal arguments. And really, it's trying to figure out what is the cause of something or what are the various effects of a particular cause. There are three basic forms of a causal argument. You could say one cause leads to multiple effects. One effect has multiple causes, and a series of events form a chain which leads to more and more and more things. So you could almost say this is like a domino theory for this particular type of causal argument. So really the idea is to figure out why something's happening, to figure out what caused something, or to figure out the various effects of a chain of events. So I'm gonna show you three examples right here. First, this is one cause leading to one or more effects. You could say cause A leads to blank, this effect, this effect, and this effect. So here's an example here. The invention of the telegraph led to commodities markets, the establishment of standard time zones, and news reporting as we know it today. That's your cause, those are your three effects. Now you're very used to writing those, especially in your history classes. What you may not be used to writing is an effect that has several causes. So here's how you would write a claim for that. Hurricanes are becoming more financially destructive to the United States, so there's your effect. Now why? Because greater intensity of recent storms, increase in the commercial and residential development of coastal areas, and reluctance to enforce certain construction standards in coastal residential areas. So instead of looking at the three effects of a cause, you're looking at the three causes of an effect. Now here's an example of a chain. You can see that you have to note one particular event which will cause another event which will cause another and so on and so forth. So for instance, making the HPV vaccination mandatory for adolescent girls will, here's the effect, make unprotected sex seem safer, next effect, lead to greater promiscuity and ultimately resulting in more teenage pregnancies. Now it's your goal to prove that with evidence. But those are your examples of different types of causal claims. So how do you find these particular causes to write about? And the tough thing about a causal argument is if something's actually worth writing about, then it's going to be very complex. It's not just going to be one cause leading to one effect or one effect coming from one cause, or one event leading to one another. It's going to be fairly complex. It's going to take a lot of research to fully understand the conversation about that topic. Now, there are four ways to do that. One is, as you're researching, try to find the common factor method, which means you're looking at one or more events and you're trying to find some sort of correlating pattern between them. If you could find evidence showing that oil fracking is connected to a greater frequency and intensity of earthquakes in certain regions. And if you could find that that leads to water de decontamination, then you could make the case that fracking is an environmental hazard. You could look as you're researching for something called the single difference method, which is you're looking for two particular events and how their outcomes were actually different. So you could look at um, two earthquakes that take place in a particular city over a course of a year and you could say how it has different outcomes. You could look at how that, why that happens, the functions of that. You'd be looking at um, two particular crime rate statistics from a city and even though they're from the same city in back-to-back -back years, you could be looking at different situations or outcomes for that. Another way you can find causes is using a shared variation method. So you could have a possible cause and a possible effect and variations in between them. So if you're looking at different causes of war in the 21st century, you could be looking at particular causes that are similar but have various effects. You're looking for shared variations, similar themes, 
different variation between those causes and effects. You could also, as you're researching, look for process of elimination, which is look at all the causes of something, the possible causes of something, rather, and then you're going to test them until you can find out which one isn't the cause. So you can write a claim saying the biggest effect of crime in cities would be poverty. And you could list how you looked at a lot of different factors and poverty is the main cause of crime in urban centers. These are different ways you can research and things to keep in mind as you're researching to come up with a causal argument. Now, let's say you've done that research, you've used one of those methods to figure out what your causal argument is going to be. You need to be moved beyond the obvious. Obvious if your readers know that you know, CO2 emissions can cause global temperatures to rise, well, you need to go deeper than that. You need to go beyond what the, the average reader already knows. You're going to need something called a, cause, called a causal chain, where you're going to show the links between event and its consequences. So you really need to convince your readers that the link is real. It's really important. Remember, you're writing to particular readers. You're not trying to convince yourself. You probably already have because you wrote your paper. You need to convince others. So you need to show that these causes actually cause this effect or this particular event will have multiple um, effects. So let's take a look at an example of this. So let's say I'm talking about global warming. And I'm going to make the case that human activity causes global warming. So I'm going to, that's going to be my claim here. And here are my reasons. Increased atmospheric CO2 will lead to a rise in global temperatures, which will lead to these three things. So you can see the chain of effects from human activity. However, remember we're supposed to look at the entire conversation. So we also have to take it from a different perspective, maybe from a skeptic or a contributor or an analyst. What about the idea of naturally cyclical warming? There is some data, although it's debatable about how relevant this is. So you could also say that natural cyclical warming will result in glacier retreat, rapid sea ice and pack ice melt and the loss of permafrost in Africa, Alaska and Siberia. Well, yeah, when you look at it all together, you need to take into account the counterclaims and multiple perspectives on the ideas of global warming. So when you really put it together, you could say overall that human activity and natural cyclical warming will both lead to these three effects. That gives you the proper research. It gives you the proper depth. It looks at really the underlying causes. It's not just taking it from one perspective. Now, how do you write a causal argument? Now you're going to see, because we're going to be talking about multiple types of arguments, we're going to see a very similar format to this with some variation. So just keep that in mind as you're watching this video. Again, when you're running a causal argument, make sure you make a claim. We just showed you an example of that. You could say something does or doesn't cause something else. Also tell us what's at stake. Tell us why this is important. Tell the readers why they should really care about your particular claim. Think of the possible causes. As you're writing this, tell us what the immediate causes of something are. So you could say crime in urban centers. What are the immediate causes? What are some background causes we may not actually think of? What are some hidden causes that aren't really talked about and are tough to find? But as you look at research and statistics, other causes are starting to emerge. And what are causes that most people have not recognized, either because people have downplayed it or because we've never really seen it before or because it's a brand new cause. Also, think about your potential readers. If your readers are very familiar with this, with this particular topic, you really don't have to go into too much background, but you have to assess who they are to, to really measure that. How familiar will they be with that particular topic you're writing about? How likely are they to know about it? How likely are they to not know? What will they probably know just based on the existing information that people see every day? How likely are they to accept your explanation? If you're going to run into a lot of resistance with your particular topic, you're going to have to come up with a lot of convincing arguments because your readers may be very skeptical of what you're trying to write about and what alternate explanations exist. And I love this one because if you're not giving credit to your count to counterclaims, then you're not writing an effective argument. Always keep that in mind. Then of course, write your draft and revise, edit and proofread. That are the, those are the steps rather to write a causal argument. 
So now that we've talked about causal arguments, let's talk about a second type of argument that you will often be making, and that's called an evaluation argument. In layman's terms, this means something is good or bad because of X. However, even though that seems very simple, the ideas to think about how to do that effectively are quite complex. So let's take a look here. Now, a lot of times people think or people make the assumption that evaluations are based just on your personal taste. I like this movie because I do. Or this food, I enjoy Mexican food because it's tasty. Well, okay, that might work in an everyday situation, but if you're gonna be writing an evaluation argument, then you have to justify the criteria that you will be using to make this argument. Because really, in any particular case, even in everyday society, people use certain criteria to make evaluations of things, whether they're good or bad. I like Mexican food because I love cheese, for instance. Now, to make an effective evaluation argument, you have to convince other people that the criteria that you are making is valid which will make your judgment sound. So really, the evaluations that you make and the criteria that you use have to establish validity. So the core of your argument is that the criteria you're using to evaluate if something is good or bad is credible. So how are you going to do this? When you're researching, you need to set out the criteria you're using to establish if something is good or bad and then make the case that thy criteria is effective in evaluating this particular topic. Now, some evaluative arguments focus on what we value. So the criteria you choose is going to be incredibly important. You have to be picky. You have to test it because, again, there's going to be lots of sets of criteria, perhaps, about your particular topic. So you also have to think about what your audience is going to view about this particular topic. What criteria do they often use to evaluate this particular topic? Because if they're using different criteria than what you would set forth, then you really have to make the case that your set of criteria is superior to theirs. So you have to think about that as you're making these arguments. So here's an example of an evaluation argument. It's your basic cookie cutter outline. Something is good or bad because it does or does not mean certain criteria. So here's an example. Google Maps is the best mapping program. What? But I thought MapQuest was great. Eh, it's not 2001 anymore. Because, one, it's easy to use, so that's one criteria you're using, the ease of use of a mapping system. Two, it's accurate, so that's the other criteria, so you're going to have to set forth, well, what is an accurate mapping system? What determines a mapping system? How does Google Maps compare to other types of mapping systems? And, is it, and it provides entertainment and educational features such as Google Earth. So you're going to have to establish those criteria, why that's a valid criteria, how Google Maps compares to other mapping services based on those criteria. Now, here's another type of outline that you can make. You can say if we're talking about a should we preserve a building or should we demolish a building, you're going to have to set forth the criteria and compare two different evaluations. Either do we preserve this old building in the city or do we demolish it and put in something new? Well, you're going to have to establish that the criteria you're using is valid and it is relevant for the readers. For instance, if you are going to make the case that a preservation plan is better, you're going to have to convince your readers who want to demolish that building that your criteria is superior to theirs, that sometimes money and progress really aren't all that important. So you have to think about that. So what are some steps to writing an evaluation argument? Now I said when we were talking about causal arguments, this is going to be very similar, but note there are going to be a lot of variations. First thing, as always, make your claim. How effective is a particular social policy? How good is a new movie that's coming out in the summer? Then talk about what's at stake. In a causal argument, you're talking about why it's important. Here, you're going to be thinking about, well, does everyone agree with you? Because if you think that this evaluation is really important, you're going to have to convince them. Who argues the opposite of your claim? Because you're going to have to address them as readers and address those counterclaims. And why do they make a different evaluation? So you have to look at their criteria and why that is inferior to the criteria that you are making. So once you think about that and you're able to describe what's at stake, now you have to list the criteria that you're using. So why is your criteria 
good or superior to others? What criteria is the most important when you're looking at this topic? And what will you have to argue for? Things to think about. Now again, it's really important to analyze your readers in the evaluation argument because you don't know what criteria they would use for this particular topic. So you really have to think about who they are and how familiar will they be with your topic just so you have to give background. Think about what criteria they're going to be using as well because if they're going to agree with your criteria, you may not have to use as an aggressive as an approach as if they're completely against it. Now, once you've thought about all that, now you're going to write your draft. So here's a bit of a cookie cutter kind of pattern. I'm a big pattern guy. Use this if it works for you. If you've never done an evaluation argument, again, use this at least once so that you've gone through the process and then you can make adjustments based on your experience. First, introduce the issue, give us some background, describe the criteria that you're going to be using and how you're going to evaluate if that criteria is effective or superior to other criteria. Think about when your readers are going to question you, the counterclaims they're going to make. Address those viewpoints because if you don't, you're not making a solid argument. Then after you've done all that, conclude based on the criteria that you have set out that something is either good or bad. Now you have to again prove that your criteria is superior in this particular topic. And once you've made your stance clear, and with an example or an analogy in your conclusion to tell your readers what to do or how they can affect this particular topic. Once you've written that, revise, edit, and proofread. And that is how you write an evaluation argument. So lastly, we're going to be talking about one more type of argument. This is a proposal argument. Now these are actually pretty tough, but they're one of the types of arguments I feel like most people would be very passionate about. So we're going to be talking about them here. Let's take a look. Now, a proposal argument is when you are basically making the case that someone should do something. Now, the example that I'm going to be using throughout this particular section is going to be plastic in the oceans. So a case could be made that the governments of the world should clean up the oceans and get rid of all the plastic. Now, you could also argue that something should not be done. So you could talk, talk about uh, fracking in North and South Dakota in the United States should not be done for environmental reasons. So again, should something be done? Should something not be done? And you have to also recognize who should be doing this. Now the challenge and why this is very difficult is because you actually have to convince your readers to do something. Now this is difficult because readers don't like to do something. We like to watch the news and look at horrible things and just think, oh, that's really terrible. But to actually convince us to do something is fairly difficult. You have to make the argument seem so important that we actually have to take action about it. So you really have to convey a sense of urgency to motivate your readers and tell us what the heck we should actually do. Because if you're not telling us what to do, we're just going to be stressed about it and we're not going to be able to have any sort of plan of action. So you have to also convince your readers that something positive will happen if we make a change. If I'm going to donate money, if I'm going to donate time, if I'm going to try to save the whales or eliminate plastics from oceans, well, is something good actually going to come about that? So you're actually going to have to convince me that something good will come about to motivate me. So here's an example of a proposal argument. Again, we should or should not do something because. So here's an example. Here's your someone, we, or it could be the government of Canada, or it can be the community of Manchester, or it can be the tribe of whatever, should convert existing train tracks in the downtown areas to a light rail system and build a new freight track around the city. So there's your doing. And here's your because statement. Because we need to relieve traffic and parking just in downtown. Now it's your goal to make people think that's important, to tell them that will result in a positive effect and convince them to actually do something to help that come about. So how do you recognize the components of these arguments? So the first thing you have to do is identify what the problem is and define the significance of the problem. You have to make me think that the problem is real. Hey, you know, plastic in the ocean, that's actually a real problem. Yeah, I know you think the ocean is this big giant thing. It doesn't matter how much plastic's in there. It really doesn't matter. However, it is real and it's because, and you can talk about fish eat the plastic and then birds eat the fish and there's just plastic in everything. We're all eating plastic, we're all gonna die. 
You also need to define the scope of the problem. This is a worldwide problem if you're talking about plastics and oceans, or is it just for particular countries or particular regions around the world? What must be done to end this problem and who has to be doing it? So, when you're stating a proposed solution, you have to be clear in what you're proposing. So you could say that um, Pacific Rim countries should adopt a insert technology here to eliminate plastics in the ocean. You got to think about the nuts and bolts though. How much is that going to cost? Is that feasible? Is the technology available? Will it actually affect the problem in a significant way? And you have to convince the readers that your proposed solution is the best solution. So maybe I am, there's a new technology that someone is using. Basically, it's a bit of a barrier right on the water to trap plastics and stop it from going toward the coast. Okay, is that really the best solution? There was another example I saw someone made a little drone that would actually go around and pick up all the plastic. So what's the best solution? You have to make the case for that and you have to make sure that this is feasible. You know, I could say we should eliminate plastics and oceans. Let's make some giant flying robots just skim the water and pick it all up. But is that actually a feasible solution that could happen? Am I going to convince my readers that this is just stupid and all right, I'm really not gonna be doing anything. So, how do you write a proposal argument? Again, similar to our causal and our evaluation arguments, just a little bit of differences here. First, as always, Make a claim advocating a specific change that people should or should not do something. Then identify the problem. What's the problem? Plastics and oceans. Who caused it? Everyone. Who is affected? Everyone. Because we all eat the fish that eat the plastic and then when we eat the fish that's eating the plastic, we're all gonna, you know. Has anyone tried to do something? You can talk about countries who've propose certain solutions that there are certain technology out there well what will happen if the problem's not solved because if you tell me to do something you have to tell me what will happen negatively if I don't do something so once you describe that think about when you propose your solution what do you want to achieve eliminate plastics from the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean what good consequences will follow from that not just for the wildlife in the ocean, but also for people and countries. Will this work? Or is there any data or evidence to propose that your particular solution to eliminating plastics and oceans will actually be feasible? Has this been tried elsewhere? If it failed, tell me why and why your solution will just tweak it to make it better and who's going to pay for it? You could say we need to plant you know, 10 billion trees, but that's a lot of money. Where is that going to come from? How is that going to be financed? The other thing you really have to think about in terms of counterclaims is what other solutions are there and why is yours better? It's incredibly important to not only talk about the other solutions to your problem, but why is your superior? Then write out your draft. Now again, I'm a big pattern person. Use this pattern if you have not done a proposal argument yet. If you have already, you could tweak this according to your experience. So first, tell me what the issue is. Tell me why this is a serious problem. Give me some background about how this problem developed and then state your claim. Now, once you've stated your thesis or your claim, you also have to explain your solution. How is it going to work? You have to address those other possible solutions and you have to make the case that yours is better. Give me data, give me statistics, give me evidence, give me experts on that. Describe the steps to implement that solution. So how are we going to use this technology to clean up the plastics and oceans? How do we get that technology there? How do we maintain it? How do we evaluate to make sure that it's effective? And tell me the positive outcomes. Make me think, you know what, I need to support this or I need to donate money or I need to donate time because this good thing will happen. You, do, you have to kind of motivate me not only with fear, but with positive reinforcement. After you've done that in your conclusion, tell me what the heck to do. Now that you've talked about how plastics and oceans were all gonna die and here's a technology that'll fix it, well, how can I support that? Do I have to write to a particular politician? Do I have to donate money? Tell me what to do. And once you've done that, revise, edit, and proofread. And that, is how you write a proposal argument. So, in our video, we talked about causal arguments, evaluation arguments, and proposal arguments. So when you are given a task, think about what type of argument 
you need to write. Well, hope you learned something you didn't know before. Thanks for watching.